Hey everybody, it's TR here and I'm back with another RV how-to video and today it's RV cell phone booster mod. So this is sort of an update to a video that I published, oh I guess it must have been a couple months ago now, on installing the WeBoost 4G-X RV cell phone booster. I'll have to say that so far so good, I'm enjoying it, it's working really well. So I left Tucson about oh, three or four weeks ago now and headed over to Ocotillo Wells, California, which put me close to the Anza Borrego State Park and also the Ocotillo Wells uh, ORV area, off-road off vehicle area if you will. And I've been having a lot of fun out there driving around checking things out in uh, Dusty the Subaru. As a photographer though, I really need internet access. And also, okay, I like my comfort. I'm sorry, I have to admit. I want my wireless and I want to be able to stream Netflix and uh, I've got this tablet. I also uh, use it for direct TV now. Uh, so I get my satellite TV over the internet, I guess you will. And uh, so that's important that I have data. I also trade stocks on occasion, so uh, it's nice to have you know good, reliable data. And I've been able to achieve that here at the Leap and Lizard RV Ranch, but it took a couple of modifications to the cell phone booster, and so I'm going to share those with you today. This video is uh, a little specific, but it will illustrate a problem you're going to run into when you're trying to uh, boost your cell phone signal. The situation here at Ocotillo Wells is not unlike many situations I've found as I've traveled around, and that is that you don't have cell phone service. Now there's a number of reasons for that and I'm going to show those here in just a little bit because I think they illustrate the general problem with cell phone signals and cell phone boosters and so on and so forth. Basically what I've done is a project I've been actually wanting to do for quite a while and that was install a sort of extendable antenna mast on an old satellite dish I have. So uh, let me show you this super nerdy antenna mount that I came up with uh, on my satellite dish here. As a side note, uh, if you don't want to get this extensive, then uh, I would suggest that all you need to do is uh, take the shaft or the mast of the antenna and use hose clamps and just clamp it to your uh, ladder on your RV. Anyway, what you got here is basically a piece of one inch square tubing uh, and I used uh, self tappers in most cases. So what that is is uh, basically quarter inch or eighth inch thick uh, hardened aluminum and on that I stacked that one inch uh, square piece of uh, metal that I had sitting around from another project that I'd done. And then you can see here uh, I also used quarter inch uh, 20 bolts and I actually drilled and tapped this piece of metal that it's mounted to which is the uh, satellite dish itself. That was aluminum so it was easy enough to uh, drill and tap that. Uh, to make that a really solid mount. So you can kind of see the underside there how I used a couple self tappers. And then also at this top mount I used the same kind of a detail where I uh, drilled and tapped the aluminum of the satellite dish mount. And then I used uh, a pipe strap, a conduit strap, but I wasn't really happy with those because if you look at this one you can kind of see uh, just putting it in I uh, tore the strap itself. They're kind of thin. So I do plan to fix that with a piece of plumber's tape. Anyway, looking up the shaft here, you can kind of see uh, here's the uh, mount uh, of the two conduits together. And I've got a lot more detail on that coming up here in a bit. And then also let's take a look at the top and there you can kind of see the directional antenna. And that's all mounted with hardware that was included with the antenna. I wrapped the coax around the shaft of the antenna to keep it from uh, slapping in the wind and it also is a strain relief so you're not uh, damaging the connection from the antenna to the coax. And so that's pretty much it. That's all there really is to this one. So basically what I did was is that I got a one inch and a three quarter inch piece of EMT conduit and then some bolts and some hose clamps that I already had on hand. And what I did was I took the one inch pipe and I just split the end with a grinder with a cutting wheel on it. That is so I can collapse that one inch pipe a little bit around the three quarter inch and make that a firmer connection. Because what I was worried about was the antenna, the inside mast if you will, working against the inside of the conduit because it's not an exact perfect fit. There is a little bit of slack there. It's not much but there's enough that it could cause a problem down the road. But in general you could extend this to any kind of height that you really want and what I found here 
at least in my experimentation, was buying a directional type antenna versus the omnidirectional that was on the booster system and putting it on a mast approximately 30 feet in the air and then looking around trying to find the signal I was able to bring in and have a pretty consistent 2 to 3 bar 4G LTE signal which has been good enough to stream from Netflix, DirecTV, whatever uh, they've all worked pretty good. Now, it has been spotty at times, and particularly on the weekends, there's a lot of people that come out here to recreate, and so the cell phone system gets a little bit loaded up on the weekends. And, of course, you have a lot more traffic, I think, out on this Sultan Sea, and, which is a part of the service area of the tower that we're attached to right now. So let's stop and talk about the problem here at Okutiel Wells. Because here, like many places, Three or four miles down the road, you get a cell phone signal. You got three to four bars of 4G. Up the road here on Split Mountain Road, which is the main road that comes in here, you can get a four bar 4G signal. So what's the deal with this particular location? And the problem is, although we're up on the edge of the mountain a little bit of, the, of, of this valley, this huge ORV area, there's mountains that are taller between us and the cell phone tower. Does that make sense? Well, let me show you. All right, so let's head over here to my workstation, and what I've got going here is something called Google Earth. I use it for a lot of things, but it's going to help me illustrate the problem that we run into here at Ocotillo Wells with cell phone signals. So first off, let's just zoom into the old leaping lizard here. And you can see here, there's the Salton Sea. This is the Imperial Valley here. Here's our friend Leapin' Lizard. Here's Borrego Springs. This area here is the Anza Borrego Desert State Park. So, really cool area. And then this area out in here is the ORV area. So that's where all the off-road vehicles uh, play around out there. So, I'm going to start with the illustration around Verizon. But I'll show you AT&T here in just a minute. Although I haven't been able to test AT&T, I'm pretty sure this setup will work for it as well. But let's slip over here and take a look at where the Verizon Tower is right now. And you can see this Verizon Tower that we're going to be using from this particular spot is out here near the Sultan Sea. For the sake of argument, we're going to assume that cell phone signals are line of sight. Okay. Now, for the purists out there, yeah, there's a lot of signal propagation that goes on where the cell phone signal can bounce off buildings and mountains or the site of my RV is a good example because the folks that were parked next to me uh, for the last three weeks or so it was kind of funny. Uh, they saw me put the cell phone booster up, and uh, then one day she, the gal over there, I think her name was Marianne, but anyway, it, that's probably not the important part. The important part is that uh, she had mentioned that now they had two bars of 4G LTE on AT&T, and that they thought it was because of my booster. In reality, I think it's because where the AT&T tower is, and I'll show you that here in a minute, um, my RV was probably acting to focus a little bit of the radio waves and bounce them into their RV. <laughs> I, I can't figure out anything else other than that because of this wave propagation thing that I'm talking to you about. What I'm going to do here now is I'm going to draw a path, a straight line path, between Leap and Lizard and the Verizon cell phone tower. And one of the really cool things and I really like about Google Earth here is that they allow you a profile view of that line. So look here at the bottom of my screen. What you're seeing is a profile of the ground between us here at Leap and Lizard and the cell phone tower out here. Also, if you watch up here on the screen, you can see that with that red arrow where we are along that line. Okay, so Here's our friend Leapin' Lizard. We're up here at about 182 feet in altitude. But over here where the cell phone tower is, that's 155 feet below sea level. Now, yes, the tower is in the air about 30 meters. Okay? And my tower is in the air about 10 meters. If we assume that that cell phone needs a direct line of sight, you can see that between us here and that cell phone tower, there's a whole lot of terrain, okay? So basically we're in a shadow. We're sitting in a shadow that's being caused by these mountains right here, okay? You see here where we're at? That mountain right there is at 186 feet. And then it starts to drop off. 
and you can see here oh yeah that's 137 feet but look at the way these mountains are laid out okay you see these they're linear and they're in line with our line okay the other thing is that the really high spot is just this little boulder right here okay so that is not enough to block the signal but if we come back over here to this area they're going to block it much more because the face of this little hill here is facing that cell phone tower and so that's going to block a lot more of the signal if we look at it this way just a couple miles up split mountain road here you get four bars of 4g lte that's about five miles up the road there on split mountain road which is this road right here okay so let's take a look at that path and now let's look at its profile see we're up here around 177 feet here and then we drop off to that same distance below sea level but look we have a much cleaner straight line path to the cell phone tower but keep in mind that this cell phone tower is you know 90 feet off the ground 100 feet off the ground and so you know that helps you know with this angle here so that's pretty much the basic problem with cell phone service in many places and just in this case it happens to be a mountain or really I wouldn't call them mountains because I'm hesitant to call those mountains especially where I'm from Idaho it's enough of a bump in the terrain to uh, block cell phone service here from Verizon um, you get a little bit away from here and you'll pick up an analog signal pretty consistently but uh, right here at uh, Leap and Lizard and in the in the general area here around uh, Ocotillo Wells I found that there is little to no cell phone service so you want to keep that in mind so that's pretty much it uh, pretty simple project really except uh, other than my RV antenna mount on steroids. Um, obviously, most RVers don't want to go through that kind of hassle. I had it on, you know, I had time on my hands and had been thinking about the project for a while. Uh, most people, I think, what you would want to do is, is probably buy one more piece of conduit. And in this particular case, you'd want to get inch and a quarter because uh, that's the next size up. Split the top of that, put the hose clamps on it. And then take that whole assembly and just hose clamp it right to your uh, RV ladder. And that should be plenty of strength to hold that tower up there as far as you need to be. The other thing you want to keep in mind is as you get taller and taller, you're definitely going to want to be thinking about uh, using some kind of a guy wire. And so I do plan to do that. I bought this guy wire ring, if you will, that clamps. It will clamp onto the top. And then I'm going to install some D-rings on the roof of the RV and just tie it off with some paracord or something like that so it's a temporary type of a fix i will say that the system that i have now withstood 50 mile an hour winds there is a private person that uh, participates in the accuweather network and uh, uh, they're only about three or four blocks away and they recorded 50 mile an hour gusts here a couple days ago and so uh, the tower withstood that it did creak and groan quite a bit and i got up there a couple times to check it because i was worried about it but it held up pretty solid, so I think uh, I think that's a win for me anyway. Every site's going to be different, okay? I know of a couple sites I'm going to here later in the spring and summer that uh, I've had cell phone problems with before, and so of course I'll be uh, testing out the system when I get up there, and I'll come back and update those as time permits. If you like this video, be sure and give me that thumbs up. I appreciate that. If you think I've overlooked something or I've forgotten something, don't hesitate to ask questions or make comments. I love interacting with the audience. Uh, and I'll try to answer your questions, and if I can, I'll try to research it and figure it out for you, because it's probably something I thought about and maybe overlooked. That'll have to do it for this episode. Thanks for watching. I do appreciate it. Until we get together again.